Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today is a short video response to Very Merry Videos. And Very Merry Videos has made some great videos about INFJ and the ENFP relationship. Videos that got me to really think about and try to define and understand my own relationship with my girlfriend. Because a lot of the time I feel our relationship is so seamless and so natural. We have always felt very instantly connected to each other. We can converse and talk with each other for days and days and days. And in the beginning of our relationship, most of our communication was strictly through messages. We were talking from the morning to the night, you know. Every day we were talking, talking, talking. It felt like she was right next to me wherever I went in my day and wherever I was up to. So we had such a fluid and seamless connection that came out of nowhere. And actually, I feel like I've never really had the chance to think about and try to define it. It just has been a wonderful experience and a strong, instant physical attraction and connection, both mentally and physically. So when I met her, and we met about half a year into after that we started talking to each other in Stockholm, we also just connected physically as well. Of course, I didn't know we would uh, and you know, when you meet somebody online, you don't know if uh, uh, that connection will also be there physically, but it was, it was just uh, natural, you know, it just happened and uh, we never talked about it or s talked about it becoming something more. It just happened and it just came out of nowhere in a sense. And uh, it was like we spent the day together in Stockholm and then I went home alone to think like after met, meeting her, like I, I decided to think about it, like, do I want to date her? Yes, I want to date her. <laughs> yeah, it was such a natural choice. Like I uh, usually tend to take very long time to think about something and to weigh and back and forth and co to process what it is. And, you know, I was very overwhelmed by her energy and her personality. But at the same time, I was like, yeah, I do. I really do. I really want to spend more time with her. And uh, I was smitten from the get go. So moving together, moving in together, that was a bigger hurdle because she was in Amsterdam and I was in Sweden. So uh, we had a lot of back and forth about who would move in with who, <laughs> like who would move. That was a big conflict. And uh, uh, from the be beginning, it was really... The idea was that she would move, but uh, the more we thought about it, the more the process went, we realized it was simply better if I moved. It was much better if I would move. I was in a better stage in my life. I had just finished my school and she was still into her job. She was just getting a promotion, like everything was going very, very well for her. So it became natural that I should move and I was actually very happy to move. Though in the beginning phase it was very difficult and very overwhelming. Yeah, honestly, getting into a new culture and getting a job and settling in with everything that's going on, that was very hard on me. And uh, I had a lot of pressure on myself in those times and it was quite a hurdle to get past it. But uh, there the positive thing was she never doubted me once. She never said to me that, oh... Uh, are you really in this? Are you really gonna stay? Are you really? Can I really trust that you'll still be here? Can I? She never once questioned me and said, "Oh, your YouTube career is not getting anywhere. You know, you need to do something else." She never put those words in my mouth. You know, she let me have my process and to come to my decision on my own. And in that way, she really respected my independence and made me feel like it was my choice and my responsibility and uh, she really tried her best to stay out of my business and I feel that about ENFPs. ENFPs hate to micromanage people and to tell people what to do. They want people to just naturally come to the same decision they want you to come to. So in that way that was very conducive to my growth as a person and uh, it helped me get in there like she was very patient with me for the first three months even though I didn't have a lot of money or uh, even though she ended up carrying a lot of the financial burdens in the beginning uh, I she was very patient with me throughout and she even surprised me to dinners and was very romantic and very affectionate and like very like positive even when I was struggling to you know make ends meet in that first time 
So beyond that, uh, her trust in me and her support and her like faith and hope was very important. And beyond that, her spirit to always think next of the next step. She always thought of the next step. So what are we going to do now, Eric? Okay, or do we want to move to an apartment? Do we want to try out this? Do we want to go to a different city? How do you feel in this apartment? How do you feel here? She was very, very democratic. And this is something I've come to learn about ENFPs. ENFPs are incredibly democratic. They let you feel like you have a voice in every decision. They involve you in every part of their life, you know. They make you feel a part of everything. Their family, friends, everything. They are very quick to invite you. They don't put up a wall in that way unless they've had very bad experiences in the past. For the most part, they try to make you feel connected to them and to every part of their life. And they ask for your feedback and your opinion on basically everything. So you never really feel like an outsider. I know in other relationships I've been in, it's been easy to feel like an outsider looking in, you know, like the other person has their walls and their things and their situation. and. Yeah, you know that can cause the relationship to feel like it's kind of divided like you we have a relationship together but you have yours and I have mine but with her it was we could share anything with each other and my things were also her things and her things were also my things so that also became very important for me because uh, it made me feel connected in a way I didn't even know I wanted to feel connected like I didn't even know I wanted that or that I needed that but she gave it to me and when I got it, it was like natural, like, yeah, this is what I want. This is important to me as well. I think in the beginning, though, I think she did think me as inconsiderate. She thought that she was the only one making an effort to, you know, talk, communicate her feelings and make her views heard. She felt a lot of the time that I that I didn't share or open up with what I wanted and what I felt and what I cared, liked and what, what was important to me, you know. So she thought at times that I was inconsiderate and that I didn't care for her feelings. And yeah, that became disproven though uh, quite fast or slowly, slowly but steadily it became uh, quite clear that uh, though sometimes I could make an effort to communicate better with her and to involve her more, she started to realize that I was thinking about her all the time. Well, she knew that... She came to learn, I think, that I always think about her. I always take her view into account. I'm always uh, thinking about what she wants, what I can do for her, how I can make her happy. And Very Mary made a point that INFJs try too hard to make you happy. And you know, when you're an ENFP, you can uh, be quite prone to mood swings. And you have your bad days and you have your good days. And things are sometimes hard and sometimes heavy. And... As an INFJ, you can't fix everything. You can't always make your partner happy. You can't always make your friends happy. You know, as an INFJ, that's very hard to accept. Still, I feel over time we got past that hurdle. At least we are getting past it. I think it was sometimes uh, difficult for her because I kind of made her pressured into feeling happy, even though she wasn't. And sometimes she didn't want to feel happy because things were difficult. And then to have see my stress trying to make her happy and to try to make things okay I think that was very hard for her so over time I came to change my strategy and perspective I came to recognize that I can't always make people happy and uh, sometimes it's okay to be sad and to have to be upset and for things to be difficult and uh, so I came to settle for the second best thing even though I can't make her happy I can at least have her back and at least be by her side and that took some of the pressure away of it. Like it was not that I was looking for the emotional gratification that, oh, now she's happy, now she's great. But it was rather that I was looking just to be a person that had her back and that supported her through that difficult time. And now I don't want to make the point that ENFPs are the moody ones because I feel INFJs can be equally moody and annoying and grumpy and frustrating to be around. Honestly... We can be difficult for a lot of people and personality types, but I feel it's easier for an ENFP to be around an INFJ and to handle our version of moody. Like, often as an, e uh, as an INFJ, what happens when you get moody is you get silent, you get uncommunicative, you get dark, everything feels heavy and difficult and impossible and, 
you're like in the slow funk, you know, nothing is happening, you feel creatively blocked, you don't have any ideas for any videos, you don't have any ideas for anything, like nothing comes to you, you go through that artist block and that's of course very difficult as an INFJ because you are very proactive, you have that yay side to you, you have your goals and you sometimes struggle because you can't meet your own expectations on yourself and you can't live up to your own intellectual expectations on yourself uh, and can't perform at the level you want to. So to have an INFJ, to have an ENFP partner that doesn't care about that stuff is very positive and very important to me. To know that she actually doesn't care about my success, she doesn't depend on it, she doesn't need me to be ambitious, she does, has never pushed me to show ambition or to show more drive or to be more consistent. Instead she has said everybody has a bad day and you can't always be productive and sometimes it's nice to just take it easy and have a nice day. You don't always have to work, you don't always have to produce, you don't always have to you know be in that phase and in that way she kind of snuffed me out of uh, my obsessive tendencies a lot of the time, you know, where I would get very tunnel vision and very narrow and very set and very much focused, she would be always open, so she would always be the one that came up with the healthy distractions, like, uh, let's go out for a day, let's try out something new, like, let's, let's check if there's any new places we could visit, you know, and that would be like, uh, when I was like, mm, thinking about what next video to make, oh, thinking about how to fix a theory that I was struggling with, uh, dealing with like a uh, question about the personality type that I couldn't find the answer to she would be like let's go out and find a nice cafe somewhere we haven't seen before and that would be like oh yeah oh yeah I have to live I have to be happy I have to enjoy life and I have to go out as well so she became very positive in that way and she also has become very positive in a sense that I feel I can count on her in so many ways. Like uh, thinking about the practical dynamics of our relationship, I feel like uh, we have a very strong, like uh, both physical and mental bond. So, you know, it's very natural for me to be close to her and to like hold her hand and to hold her or to sit next to her or cuddle up with her. Like all those things have been so easy for me and that's quite fast, surprising for me because I'm not one that is very open to physical touch with other people. Besides her, like there's, I'm not very comfortable with people touching me or hugging me or things like that. It's something I have to physically strain myself to do and uh, something that I find to be quite difficult. But with her, it's so natural. And that's always been like a surprising point to me. I c like any relationship, I feel like the biggest conflict you get in a relationship is what you eat, uh, who cleans, who takes care of the house, who does the chores, and uh, uh, why hasn't anybody done the chores? That's probably the most common conflict we have in our relationship. Like, why hasn't anybody cleaned? Why hasn't anybody cooked? Why hasn't anybody done anything? And we get into that funk quite a lot. Uh, and I, she often feels like she's the only one that takes initiative. Like, she's the only one that notices that the house is dirty and needs to be clean. She, oh, she always feels like, oh, there's always things everywhere, like laying around. Why didn't you pick up for yourself? Like... Uh, don't you realize I'm in this house too, you know? Uh, and she is actually the one that uh, notices that the house is messy. And I, honestly, sometimes I don't even notice that the house is messy. And she's like, oh my God, how do you not see that it's messy? Uh, but she goes through that like once a week or once every second week. Like uh, she goes through that phase where she doesn't see anything. and She doesn't hear anything. And after a week, she goes like into this everything has to be clean right now and we have to take care of everything and everything is a mess and it's so dirty in here and oh my god <laughs> and uh, for me it's like uh, I have my small routines that I do every day like I cook most of the time I'm the one that does most of the cooking in the house and uh, I do vacuuming like once a week and uh, I have that you know I uh, um, clean up the board to do the laundry when I see that the laundry pile is high and those like automatic chores and I'm very good at those automatic chores you know like 
Uh, cook, laun- doing laundry as soon as the laundry needs to be done. Cooking once you get hungry, you know, those things. Uh, for her, it's not very automatic, I feel like, but something she has to force herself to do. <laughs> like, yeah, and something that, uh, like, for the most part, it simmers underneath the surface and then suddenly it blows up. For her, it's like that. She goes through those phases of uh, not seeing anything and then suddenly seeing how dirty everything is. And uh, then she has to do everything kind of right away, in a sense. So uh, when she starts cleaning and when she gets into that mood, I uh, have no choice but to break up everything I'm doing and to go with her on that. And I think she can feel frustrated that she has to take all the initiative in that. Like, uh, why do I always have to take initiative for all the big cleaning and for all the things like that? And uh, honestly, it's a blind spot for me. I don't even notice and uh, I'm glad she does because obviously it affects me too and the house is a mess so yeah I try to learn from that and I try as well to take more initiative Um, a problem for me is I feel very much like a lone wolf so I have to do everything on my own so I could do a better job but involving her in it as well like when things have to be cleaned I tend to clean them myself I don't tend to say to her oh we need to clean (laughs) I instead I say I'll clean and uh, that's my lone wolf instinct in me. Oh, I will do it myself. I'll take care of it. It's my responsibility. Uh, but she always feels like we should make like more of a group effort. Like we should do things together and we should like help each other out to clean and we should take care of things. But I don't know. Uh, I felt very much that things have been my responsibility. And I think I come from that from my background and my childhood. Uh, I felt everyone's happiness was my responsibility, everyone's uh, needs was my responsibility and yeah, sometimes I have to really break out of that. Another point that she has brought before me is my fear of conflict. Like I am legitimately afraid of conflict, I feel drained by conflict. When another person tries to argue with me, I tend to break the argument up very quickly. It's not that I directly run from it, it's that I stop arguing back i stop trying to make a push back i stop trying to i just give in immediately you know and uh, it's because conflict physically drains me so much and because i'm so sensitive i take things so personally uh i hate escalation i hate uh, you know when things are just going back and forth and we're not getting anywhere and it's just a competition i'm not very competitive competitive at all like uh I'm okay letting the other person win (laughs) if it means I don't have to argue anymore. But sometimes instead of trying to argue back, I should try to move the argument forward. Like instead of taking a step back and giving in, I should be trying to say um, what we can do instead or what we can improve at or how we can fix it. Like I should try to be more constructive instead of passive in an argument. And uh, my inner fear has kind of helped me realize that. Beyond that, what can you say about living with an ENFP? Well, we have plushies all over the house. She loves cute things. She uh, loves color. We have books everywhere. Like our house is overflowing with books. We have pictures of travel everywhere and of different places because that's very big to us. We travel together all the time. Uh, we uh, watch a lot of videos and TV shows together and we love to discuss the people in the videos. Um, we love exploring new recipes. We just go to the cookbook, Bish Bash Bush. Like this is not a paid promotion, but it's just a great book uh, with vegan recipes. We're both vegan. Uh, we uh, are very active people. Like we are always up to something. We're always going somewhere. Uh, there's always something to do together, so we're always trying out something new. I feel like we do way much more than most people around us. Like, yeah, we spend a lot more time together in that sense. And uh, we are a bit, perhaps, too attached sometimes. Like, uh, we do everything together and we share most of our lives with each other. So, yeah, some people say we're practically married. And there's some truth to that. I cannot deny it. Uh, but I would also not want to change it. I'm very happy with her and I'm very happy with our cat and I can't wait for what's to come and for our future and uh, 
for where we come to live next and for having our first dog together or yeah for all those small things you know I'm very much uh, happy to think of the future when I am with her so yeah that's my perspectives living with an ENFP girlfriend thanks for watching this video and it became a lot longer than I thought because that's just how I roll